This tragic case takes place in Denver, Massachusetts. A small town with a lot of history, it was initially known as Salem Village. Denver is perhaps most well known for the witch trials in 1692. In this video, we learn about the untimely death of Colleen Ritzer, a kind-hearted high school teacher from Denver, Massachusetts. Finding out who murdered her will make you sick to your stomach. Colleen Ritzer was born in Lawrence, Massachusetts. She had two younger siblings. Her family and peers described her as talented, positive, and genuinely passionate about helping people. She graduated from Andover High School and then went to college at Assumption College in Worcester, Massachusetts to become a teacher. Colleen understood from a young age that she wanted to be a teacher. Her love for teaching was obvious and she frequently began her classes with inspirational quotes. She was very active on Twitter, posting puzzles and games to help her students learn math. This lively, passionate, and enthusiastic approach to teaching made her the most popular teacher in school. October 22, 2013 stars a typical school day for 24-year-old Colleen Ritzer. However, there was one student in her 8th period math class who she noticed was having a particularly tough time. That student was 14-year-old Philip Chisholm. Philip had a bit of a rough upbringing. He had just moved to Massachusetts from Tennessee with his mother following his parents' divorce. They were living in his aunt's basement. Philip was a quiet and reserved teen. He excelled in sports, soccer being his favorite, and was a top goal scorer for his high school team, but he struggled academically. Colleen asked Philip to stay back after class so she could help him prepare for an upcoming exam. The CCTV caught her leaving room A209 and briefly talking to a teacher before heading to the second floor bathroom just before 3 p.m. At 6.30 p.m. that day, Philip Chisholm's mother, Diana Chisholm, filed a missing persons report. Her son was missing. At 9 p.m., Danvers High School principal emailed her staff and the faculty, informing them that their 14-year-old student had been missing. Following this email, another teacher called the principal, Sue, to let her know that Colleen Ritzer had been missing as well. Colleen lived with her parents, who had been expecting her hours ago. When she did not come home that day, they called the teacher and asked about Colleen. Colleen's father, Tom, had gone to her school to look for her, but he couldn't find her, so he drove back home. After a few hours passed, with no news from either of them, concern about their whereabouts grew. Sue and a few other teachers went to the school to look for the two of them, but they were nowhere to be seen. Colleen's classroom appeared just as she had left it, but her possessions were missing and her car remained parked in the same position. With no word from their daughter, the Ritzers filed a missing person complaint with Denver police at 11.30 p.m. The detectives had her cell phone provider pin the location of her phone. It turns out her phone's last known location was 24 minutes away from Danvers High School. They also pinned Phillip's phone, which was traced to a nearby Hollywood Hits premiere theater cinema. But when the police arrived, he was no longer there. The police searched the area where Colleen's phone was giving off a signal, and to everyone's concern, they found Colleen's purse in the surrounding area. It was empty. Her cards and ID were gone. On October 23, 12.30 a.m., police found Philip walking alone on a highway in Topsfield. They pat him down and found a knife on him. They then took him to the Topsfield police station and checked his bag. Inside the backpack, the police found a box cutter covered in blood along with Colleen's credit cards and driver's license. They also found a woman's underwear, later identified as Colleen's. Philip told the police that he found these items lying around in a store and he decided to pick them up. When asked where the blood on the box cutter came from, he simply replied, The girl. He was taken to the Denver police station for further questioning. Meanwhile, after finding Philip, the police knew that they were now searching for Colleen's body and they ended up finding her very quickly. At around 3 a.m., they found the body of Colleen Ritzer. She had been stabbed, strangled, and raped. She was naked below her waist and her shirt was pulled up. Her legs were spread into a sexually suggested position and she had been violated by a tree branch still inside her. Next to her body was a handwritten note that read, I hate you all. Near her body, they found a recycling bin, clothing, and gloves covered in blood. The school and the surrounding area had over a hundred security cameras, and the police started going through the footage. 
They looked at the school surveillance video and could quickly map out precisely what had happened. Another student in Colleen's class that day recalled that after the lesson had ended, Colleen asked Philip to stay behind to help him do some preparation for an upcoming exam. The student said that while Philip and Colleen were chatting, Colleen commented on Tennessee, which made Philip visibly upset. Colleen noticed this and quickly changed the subject, but it didn't seem to make a difference. Shortly after the two stopped talking, Colleen left the classroom towards the second floor bathroom. A minute later, Philip could be seen on the camera following Colleen. He put his hood up and put on some gloves. He walked behind her into the bathroom, strangled her, stabbed her 16 times with the box cutter, and raped her. At some point, a female student walked into the bathroom. She later told the police that she thought she had walked into someone changing. The person's backside was exposed and clothes were piled on the floor. She quickly turned and left. Philip then left the bathroom. Over the next few minutes, he ran in and out of the school building, eventually returning to the classroom and fetching his and some of Colleen's belongings. He then put on a ski mask, got a recycling bin, put Colleen inside it, and dragged it out through the school's parking lot. When he got Colleen into the woods, he sexually assaulted her with a tree branch before leaving her parsley clove body on the ground, covering it with sticks and debris. Philip returned to his school half an hour later. He had blood on his jeans and was barefoot. He changed his clothes, returned to the second floor bathroom one more time, and left the building. Afterwards, he went to the cinema and purchased a ticket using Colleen's credit card. The footage from the CCTV made it very clear that Philip was the one who killed Colleen. He was arrested for the rape and murder of Colleen Ritzer. Philip stood trial in Salem Superior Court and pleaded not guilty to the armed robbery, rape, and murder of Colleen Ritzer. In Massachusetts, anyone who is 14 years of age or older with a murder charge is automatically tried as an adult. Philip was charged as an adult for the murder of Colleen and as a youth offender for aggravated rape and armed robbery. While awaiting trial, Philip attacked a youth service worker. He followed her into a locker room, pinned her against a locker, and stabbed her with a pencil. Fortunately, the service worker survived, although she suffered injuries to her face, neck, jaw, and back. Philip was charged with attempted murder and faced a separate trial for this case. His trial for Colleen Ritzer's case began in 2015. Since all the proof that the heinous crime was available, Philip Chisholm's defense lawyers did not dispute Philip killing Colleen. Still, they argued that Philip killed her after a psychotic episode triggered by Colleen mentoring Tennessee to him. They asked the jury to find him not guilty for the reason of insanity. The defense argued that Philip's family had a history of mental illness and a psychiatrist backed the defense saying that Philip had early onset schizophrenia, which accounted for his actions. But the doctor who testified for the prosecution said that Philip was not psychotic and his symptoms were inconsistent. The prosecution argued that it was evident that he had planned the attack as he bought a ski mask, gloves, and a box cutter to school that day. This was not the sign of a psychotic break based on the conversation they had in the classroom. The defense also fought hard to acquit Philip of the sexual assault in the woods. They disagreed with the medical examiners, saying that they thought Colleen had died by the time the assault with the tree branch happened, meaning that Philip should be acquitted of that part of the crime alone. Finally, Philip Chisholm was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Colleen Ritzer, with parole eligibility in 25 years, the highest time allowed by Massachusetts state law. Along with that, he was sentenced to 40 years in prison for the aggravated rape and 40 years for the armed robbery, which means that he will not be able to apply for parole until he's in his 50s. He was acquitted of the second count of rape in the woods, as the jury believed Colleen had passed away by that point. Massachusetts does not have a law against the violation of a corpse, unlike other states. Philip Chisholm was placed in a juvenile detention facility and will remain there until he turns 21. The story of Colleen Ritzer is tragic. She loved nothing more than inspiring people. She was genuinely passionate about her job and loved helping people. Over 1,000 people attended her funeral, which shows the difference she made in people's lives. The fact that Philip Chisholm committed this heinous crime at such a young age potentially means that America caught a serial killer in the making.